Hello again and welcome to the last episode of our tutorial series. So at this point we've built a full metronome billing integration from ingesting raw events all the way to generating invoices. Today we'll wrap it all up by adding a simple front end. So let's jump right into the code. In earlier episodes we used curl to call our Flask API which in turn called our metronome client that wraps the official metronome SDK. Now we're adding UI to do the same thing with buttons. And to implement that UI, we're adding three files to our repo. So this index.html file, which is the minimum markup for prices and controls, the style.css for our layout, and then app.js, which is the vanilla JavaScript that calls our API. As usual, let's start by looking at our metronome client. We've added a few new methods here. Let's start by looking at the create customer method. Previously, we were creating our customer in the metronome app and then making sure their ingest alias was saved in our local environment. Now we're actually going to use the metronome SDK to create our customer. So we just take the name and ingest alias as parameters and pass them to the metronome v1 customers create endpoint. And then we're adding this next method to get usage. This method takes a few parameters, customer ID, billable metric ID, start and end time, group key, and window size. It gives us this customer's grouped usage for the billable metric by the provided group key. And we get that with this list with groups method in the metronome SDK. We'll be using this later on for our UI. We also added a get rate card prices by tier method. So this will take a rate card, a product, the group key, which in our case is the image type. And we'll pass that to this endpoint in the metronome SDK to retrieve the prices on our rate card. And this is to make sure we're using the prices on our rate card for our front end. Remember, the rate card is the source of truth for our pricing. So that is it for our metronome client. Let's check out the Flask server now. So the first thing we're adding here is the helper method to make sure we're sending our events with deterministic transaction IDs. This is something we had discussed back when we talked about event design. So we're bucketing by date, loading local state and keeping a counter here, which we increment and save back to the state file. Here we're just taking a short suffix from the customer ID by taking the last eight characters, stripping them of any non-alphanumeric characters, and then keeping the last five of that clean slice. And we're going to use that suffix as part of our transaction ID. So to get the transaction ID, we're gonna concatenate Nova, our tier name, today's date, the suffix which we just created, and then our zero padded sequence from earlier as well. And really the best way to think about this is just uh, look at an example. So that's Nova, our tier, today's date, the customer suffix, and then the sequence. So this is just an example of how you could create a deterministic transaction ID. And so we're calling this method in our ingestion to make sure to send a deterministic transaction ID. So we call the method here to get the transaction ID, which we then send in our event. All right, so the next method we've added to our server is this one to make sure we have a valid product and rate card in our local state. We added a similar method for billable metrics in a previous episode. With this, we're validating all of our core components for our front end to use. So we're loading the state, getting the product and rate card IDs. If we find both of them, we just return here. And if either are missing, we call our client to create it. And these are just methods we've used in the past. So the create product method here, and then the create rate card method. And then we're going to update our API pricing route with this method. So now every time we hit our pricing route, we make sure we have a billable metric, a product, and a rate card. All right, and the next thing we're doing is creating a customer. So this is our updated customer creation flow. Instead of doing it through the metronome app, we're now calling the SDK. So our front end will pass in a name and optionally an ingest alias. We also have a default value for the name, which you'll see in a bit. And then there are two cases. The straightforward one is if the front end does not send an alias, then we just create a customer with the name. And of course here we're calling the create customer method we added to our client earlier. Okay, so the second case is if the front end does send an alias. So now we do a lookup with that alias to see if there's an existing customer. And if there is, we just return that customer. 
if there's no existing customer with that alias, then we call our create customer method with the name and the alias from the front end. That's our customer creation. And then we just update our state with the new customer ID. Let's check out our usage route now. This is where we tally today's usage for the active customer grouped by image type. And we'll be using this for our UI in a bit. So if there's no customer or no contract yet, we'll return empty to avoid showing stale data. And then we make sure there's a billable metric. Of course, we compute today's window and we call our get usage grouped method, which we added to the metronome client earlier. So after that, we aggregate counts by tier. We get our prices for each tier. Then we're just calculating the amount by doing multiplication here. Our use case here is simple enough that we're doing the calculation ourselves for immediacy. But in production, we recommend that you use the customer's invoices list breakdowns endpoint as your authoritative source for build dollars. It'll incorporate discounts, credits, commits, and any non-flat pricing as well. And lastly, we added an index route to our server. So this route renders the one page UI for our demo. And it's going to call the get rate card prices by tier method we added to our client earlier to make sure that we have the right prices in our state file. And with that, we've wired our server routes. The UI is plain HTML JavaScript that calls them. Let's take a quick look at those files as well. So starting with our HTML file, these prices come from the index route we were just looking at. So the page shows real dollars. And these buttons carry the data tier. So our JavaScript reads from here and posts to our API generate route to send events. Let's look at that generate call in our JavaScript. So this block sends a post to our API generate route with just the tier. The server assigns a deterministic at important transaction ID. We parse the response and if successful, show a quick toast. And because the usage API can be eventually consistent, we schedule three load usage calls with small backups so that our front end numbers update quickly without hammering the server. Now let's check out our UI to see all of this in action. So I'm going to launch my server, of course. And now instead of sending current requests to the server, like we did in previous episodes, we're going to navigate to this URL in our browser. All right, here's our one page sample Nova front end. The current state of our metronome account is that we have a billable metric, we have a, we have a rate card, but we don't have any customers yet. So we're going to onboard a couple and send usage for them. And you'll notice that until I actually create a customer, the create contract and generate events are all inaccessible. Okay, so let's create our first customer. So I'm just going to use the pre-populated name for this first customer. So let's go ahead and create it. It looks like that worked. And now my create contract button is enabled. So I'll click on that. My contract was successfully created as well. So now we can send events. Looks like the first one worked for high res and my usage and total were accurately updated as well. So as we saw in the JavaScript earlier, after we send events, we try to load usage every few seconds, three times with staggered backup. And that's what allows us to refresh the UI. So let's send more usage. And we'll call that good for our demo user today. So they generated one standard image, two high res images and one ultra for a grand total of 22 cents. And we need to remember this amount for when we look at the metronome app in a minute. Okay, let's try a second user. So this second user is John Snow. John at Nova.com is their ingest alias. I'm going to create the customer. So our customer creation worked. Let's create the contract for him and we'll send some usage as well. Okay, so John is a bit spendier than our other user and has racked up a grand total of 52 cents. And the breakdown for his usage was one standard, four high res and three ultra. So now let's see how this all looks in the metronome app. We'll go to the customers page and already we see both of our users here, which is great news. Let's check out our demo customer first. Here's their active contract, which we created in the UI. And here is their invoice. 
and we can confirm the usage amount. So two for high res, one for standard, one for ultra, and the total is 22 cents, which matches exactly what we sent from Nova. Let's check out Jon Snow too, real quick. His contract is also active, and the Angest alias we configured for him shows up as well. Let's check out his invoice, and we have four high res images, one standard and three ultra, for a total of 52 cents, which matches John's actual usage in Nova. One last thing we can look at real quick is the event ID, just to confirm it's using the format which we configured earlier. So Nova is hooked up to Metronome and up and running. So let's take it all the way back to episode one for a minute. We introduced Nova, our fictional image generation service with their pricing structure, and we set out to build a full Metronome integration to power their billing. This was going to be a full stack application using Python with Flask for the backend API and vanilla JavaScript for the frontend. And the Metronome Python SDK was going to handle all our billing operations so we could track usage in real time. And we've done it. We're finally at the finish line. We've built a fully functional metronome billing integration. And with that, we've come to the end of our tutorial series. All the code we've generated and the metronome docs are linked in the description. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and product demos. And if there are particular topics you'd like to see covered, please leave a comment. Thanks for joining.